This show is brought to you by Slice on Broadway. Supporting Pittsburgh podcasting with the perfect pepperoni pizza, SliceOnBroadway.com. And listeners like you, support this show at Patreon.com slash AwesomeCast. Hey guys, it's time to get geeky, get techy, have a little bit of fun. It is the Awesome Cast episode 313. I'm Mike Sorg at Sorgatron on the Twitter here in the Mayhem Studios here in Pittsburgh, PA. And we got a we got a full house with us today in studio. And we're gonna have some fun and talk Linux of all things. Uh, so first of all, with us uh, in Studio A, he is John Chichilla, Chillatech.net. Yeah, over on the other set. Over I on feel the- like I'm yeah, I'm in, I'm in like a studio. A point one. Look, we gave you a proper mic this time. You did. It's it, great. I mean, I mean, it might look like it has a clown nose on it, but it, it's, it's appropriate. It's okay. You know, I mean, we, we're, we're, we're making it best. You know, that's that's what the Patreon's for. <laughs> and also with us on the couch, the couch is full. Our friends, the yearly visit. I think it's your third year in a row you visited us, right? Yeah, I think Seems so. Seems right. Yeah. Um, and, and, and everything looks exactly the same as it did three years ago. <laughs> <Here>. <laughs> our friends from Ohio... Linux Fest, Susan Rose on the left if you're on our video, and Vance Kokenderfer. That's right. Yes, I got it. (laughs) I got it. (laughs) Uh, Joining us uh, this week, how you doing, guys? Pretty good. How about you? Uh, Good. Are you you sweating the uh, the uh, Linux Fest uh, preparations right now? Well, we're ten days away, so we're oh boy. Just all these last minute things to catch up with. <laughs> we'll, we'll get more into that in a moment. But of course, please go check everything out at awesomecast.net, including this show uh, weekly for you. And of course, the awesome chat. We just had a great conversation we posted with Meta Mesh, um, Alan over there, and Pit Mesh, and, and how they're blanketing Pittsburgh with Wi Fi and why that's important for, for your community and, 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 and how you can uh, do that too. And other great conversations on there, like our friends from Epicast and from yajagoff.com, from uh, Black Forge Coffee House. There's people doing awesome things, and we have some more awesome ones lined up uh, this week. Uh, these next couple of weeks, we'll be going, we're going to talk to a student from uh, Academy Pittsburgh who knew very little code going into it, and now she's ready to go after that boot camp up there in Allentown. And of course, from uh, Deco Resources, they're doing really cool, techy, re- renewable uh, things over in Millvale. Uh, go, go, go! Check that out. And subscribe to Awesome Chat on your uh, iTunes or wherever else, and just subscribe to the uh, Awesome Cast, of course, on YouTube, iTunes, Stitcher, Spreaker, iHeartRadio, YouTube, and Facebook. And actually, we're trying something different. Of course, you can join us here live, live.awesomecast.net. That's where the chat room is. Ron Cross is joining us. Juggalo John uh, Wheels is joining us as well. For all from the uh, Greater Pittsburgh area, in the chat room on the live stream, and we're actually brought broadcasting on facebook live we're trying that see if some more people pop in from that trying some different technology we've been on youtube live for a good while and maybe uh, after a little bit more experience we'll uh, we'll have a little bit more uh, to tell you about how that goes and hopefully you guys can tell us how yeah, studio gonzo is in the shot over there yep he's joining us as well if you're on the video with john chichilla he's our our fifth guest tonight uh <laughs> And, of course, you can support the show over on Patreon, patreon.com slash awesomecast, where uh, uh, friends of ours, of course, uh, Mike Fedor of at Mike Fedor Show at the $5 level, contributing to the show, keeping the, the, the because of that, we have a spillover studio area with, with, with John Chichilla joining us. So we didn't have to tell him to stay home. He gets to come here and I have some have pizza and have pizza <laughs> with us because because. That's how we roll around here. Uh, thank you so much to him and the other people who have over over the time uh, contributed to uh, AwesomeCast, patreon.com slash AwesomeCast, um, and, and keeping it going. If you want to, uh, go, please, you contribute as little as a penny. Actually, I think there is a minimum of a dollar. They just changed oh. that this month. Um, but uh, uh, in, uh, we'll give you some some heads up on some stuff coming up, a lot of fun stuff coming up for the AwesomeCast network. All right, let's get into... Oh, wait, wait, wait. I always keep forgetting. RiversEdgePGH.com. We are there, of course, uh, Thursday morning at 8 a.m. This show rebroadcast. And we're also part of Pod Crawl this this week. Uh, Millville, PA, there's a pod crawl with us, um, the River's Edge Network, some of their shows, as well as the Jagoff, 
Uh, jump from bar to bar and listen to a podcast while you wait. Uh, Chill's going to be there. Doug, our friend from Should I Drink That, is going to be there. Rather appropriate since we'll be broadcasting from a bar. Uh, go over to River's Edge. Uh, pgh.com for more information on that and, and we'll be at the 945 slot somewhere along that crawl so <laughs> go check it out we hope to see you guys out there let's get into our awesome things of the week of course the, nothing more awesome this week than our guests joining us of course from ohio linux fest as i mentioned um how's it going so for first of all for those maybe didn't catch you the last couple of years you've been on some newbies maybe what is ohio linux fest so Ohio Linux Fest is an event that happens every fall out in Columbus. Uh, this year we're going to be in, uh, typically we've been in the Columbus Convention Center. This year we're actually going to be in the Hyatt Hotel, which is attached to the convention center. But that's going to be kind of nice and it, it lets us uh, keep things. There's going to be a lot less walking <laughs> than there has been in years past. Um, which is one of the the, the complaints people have got have uh, given us, but uh, so we're we made some improvements there, and we're going to have a whole bunch of talks. There's going to be uh, over 40 presentations that are going on uh, over Friday and Saturday, October 7th and 8th, and we have several registration options. One of which is you can sign up and attend uh, entirely for free. Name your own price. <laughs> yes. Nice. You can always throw us some some extra money if you want. <laughs> yeah, and then there's a supporter registration and uh, and the professional registration, which is you know a bit higher. Mm -hmm. And uh, there's extra things that come along with that, like lunch and T-shirt and and uh, professional training as well. Yeah, yeah. The professional one is sort of the we have some uh, some really good mm -hmm. instructors that are coming in. And they're going to be talking about things like uh, uh, Ansible, OpenStack, um, setting up SSL, which is, having done it, is more difficult than it at first seems. <laughs> and, uh, you know, a bunch of different classes. So you get to pick one in the morning and one in the afternoon to attend. It's awesome. So I guess the, you know, the, the, the usual thing is, you know, we, we like to talk about like, because I don't think people realize how important Linux is and every day how much this is being used. I, I think when people mostly think of Linux, it's it's uh, uh, that thing that some some IT guy uh, knows about for some some server mm -hmm. somewhere that I never see. Right. Yeah. Which it is. Right. But uh, but it, there is a lot of day to day and a lot of more interesting uses that are being uh, done with it. Like what are what are some things that uh, the day to day but more techie user maybe are encountering uh, uh, Linux in some fashion? Well, as you said, there's a you know huge amount of, of use on servers. Uh, of course, every every single Android phone out there runs on the Linux kernel, although it, it kind of gives you a different interface than you might see on the desktop but uh, it's it's all running Linux and other free software on there so it's um, it, it really has taken the the entire scale from running on these tiny devices all the way up to um, you know mainframe computers we've got uh, all sorts of IBM and supercomputers uh, that are running on on Linux as well so uh, in terms of a desktop it's still a Probably a, a low percentage. I don't know what the latest numbers would be, um, but it's I, I I use it every day as my primary desktop, and I'm well, more maybe more importantly, my parents use it every day. So it's not <laughs> wow. like it's something that is, uh, you know, you need to be you know some some incredible uh, uh, geek to to be able to use, or be like me that that, that uh, squeezed Ubuntu on a uh, pre Intel. Mac well, well, yeah, that was know, pretty, that's pretty impressive. That's, that's a little more of a project <laughs> right there, uh, you know. Uh, but uh, other than that, um, but no, yeah, it, it seems that it's it's uh, becoming more prevalent. I know even on the tech shows that I listen to, especially like the ones over in the Twit Network, where they have people, you know, just like the good old screensavers days, calling in with questions and everything. Um, they're saying like, you know, I like somebody was was just this week, I think, on the new screensavers talking about, you know, is this for me? How do I get into it? What what version of Linux should I be using? And and they they had a good recommendation. Like try it. You can dual boot. You can have both on your Windows 10 laptop, say, yeah. right. And as you find that you're more and more using the other thing, then you get rid of Windows 10. If you find that everything you need is there, and I think a lot of people don't realize that how much is just fine on there, right? Oh, absolutely. Uh, I mean, for for the day to day user. And and to be honest, you don't really even you know if you want to use some of this open source and free software. Uh, I mean. 
you can if you choose. I wouldn't say I recommend it, but you can you can continue to use Windows. You can you know run programs like Firefox and uh, like the VLC Media Player and a bunch of other things that are, are applications that are free and open source software. Right, right. I mean, it's gonna be. I mean, I find myself running into like the production side having problems because I'm a very Mac Final Cut person, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. But but so much uh, or Adobe or something like that. But there are alternatives certainly if you're willing to look out for them so. yeah media production is a little more difficult there are there are options out there and the 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 caveat seems to be is you know if is who is behind it and who is who is doing the development and if they have the resources to be able to to continue it and kind of put that final polish on it Right, exactly. So, uh, what are kind of things that, uh, that that people can can get into? What are your kind of tracks over there uh, on Ohio Linux Fest this year? Uh, so, our, we're we're gonna have a whole variety of topics. So, we we kind of clustered them into a few different tracks. Um, we're all we're again we're we're gonna actually have a career track again this year. That's something we've been having the past few years. Um, we'll have a few topics on um, sort of uh, developing your your own personal brand and. Uh, trying to, uh, uh, you know, turn your, your presentation skills into, uh, a, basically avoiding death by PowerPoint is the, uh, <laughs> is the, is the topic, which mm -hmm. is, it can be pretty apt. Uh, we have a, a few other technical tracks that are coming in. We have one that's on virtualization and cloud computing. So we'll have stuff about OpenStack, uh, uh, KVM. Uh, Juju, which is a new thing that uh, Ubuntu and Canonical are, are doing. Um, we've got a whole scaling track, which is kind of, you know, how do you do your operations on a large scale? And so you have things uh, like uh, MySQL repl replication, and we actually have a couple of uh, a couple of people from Facebook that are going to be coming and talking about how how they operate some of their things on uh, free and open source software at at that massive scale. So a little bit of everything. I, I mean, the Juju is something I hadn't turned, uh, I hadn't heard about. Mm -hmm. um, so this is their the, kind of the Ubuntu cloud computing initiative. It looks like it's. I'm not the best person to ask about it because I, I I did uh, attend one talk about it, and I'm sure I'm not quite sure I still completely understand it because it's not intended to replace something like OpenStack. It's supposed to sit on top of it and be an an orchestration. Manager, I think, is is what they term it. So, uh, I I still don't quite have an understanding. If you go to this talk, you will know a lot more than what I do about Juju, because uh, I still haven't quite grasped what it what exactly it's about. Right, and of course, um, um, and I heard you guys talking a little bit before about Raspberry Pis having a little bit of a presence here as well, right? And I know we've talked about it on the show. I've been experimenting with it a little bit for mm -hmm. certain functions around the house, and again, kind of playing with some different different distributions. One for a security camera. Um, what I, I, after the last few years, we're up to like the third iteration of Raspberry Pi, Raspberry Pi Zeros. They're mm -hmm. like five bucks or something out there. Um, what are you guys seeing as that kind of, is there like a growing presence year to year as more people are discovering this as, as something that can get things done? Uh, it's something that's, it, it really is in, uh, attracting a, a, a different sort of audience than maybe we've had because it, it allows you to actually interact with the physical world instead of just being limited to, okay, I'm going to develop this software and maybe it's going to run on a website or do whatever. Uh, we can actually have things that maybe operate robots or, you know, do uh, are hooked up to sensors like cameras or temperature sensors. You know, monitor your beer fridge to see if how cold it is. Mm -hmm. uh, that kind <laughs> you of know, stuff. the important stuff. Exactly. You know, you gotta you gotta <laughs> keep that stuff under control. Um, so we're we're gonna have somebody who's gonna give it a talk on basically looking at the variety of options because there are a lot of different devices that are available out there now. And kind of, kind of review what are the strengths and weaknesses of, of the various ones, and then, um, as Susan, can, I think, can maybe talk a little bit more about is uh, the the giveaways are going to be. Uh, we're going to have a group of podcasters there uh, who are going to have a little uh, area in our vendor expo. Yes. Um, yeah, I just wanted to just was listening to Vance and thinking about all the things that I wanted to add in there is is in the Internet of Things. 
the Linux is embedded in a number of different things that you don't even know about. It might be in your washing machine or in your coffee pot or something. There's uh, lots of small Linux programs that are that are running um, uh, out there. But um, but it's uh, really interesting that um, there's been cross pollination with open source software and open hardware and trying to keep the hardware open enough so the hardware isn't proprietary so that the open source software can can run on it and one of the ways to do that is of course build your own devices and and um, the the thing that I really like to see is um, especially with young people is to be involved in the maker uh, movement and uh, Ruth Suley was one of our um, was one of our speakers a few years ago, and she was saying that when she was a kid growing up, it was like, "Oh, cool! How can I make that?" You know. So I think if we kind of instill that in our kids and show them these Raspberry Pis and everything else that they're doing in the maker community, and 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 bring them on board as part of um, the uh, free and open source um, community. Um, software freedom community is just it's just like peanut butter and jelly they were just meant to to go together so um, talking about community um, I'm the social media uh, community manager for Ohio Linux Fest and I just wanted to mention that this is our 14th year and uh, back the, I think the, there's a number of people that have been there every year um, including my daughter who's Bethlyn Eicher and she helps uh, run the Ohio Linux Fest. But um, the very first year it was held at Ohio State University campus. And it was a um, statewide lug meeting for um, Ohio for all different uh, Linux users groups that came there. And, and it, was, it was so good that the next year she volunteered and the next year she came back and came back and came back and, and pretty soon she was uh, pretty, pretty uh, involved in it and I got involved in it too. And it's, and it's been a really uh, wonderful experience. And, and it's a community that is like a coming home every year to, to this uh, community. Uh, we get to know each other over the course of the years. Um, you get to know the volunteers that come back, um, you know, continuously. And um, we have a lot of social things going on in Ohio Linux Fest, too. Um, there's a, um, on Friday night, there's a um, happy hour um, that is uh, sort of right after the keynote and before the Birds of the Feather um, um, groupings which are, are on Friday night. The birds of the feather are really great because that's where people can really network and really throw up their own little group to discuss um, the topics that interest them the most. And then on Saturday, there's the after party. And, oh, geez, what else? There's the dinner with the keynotes. There's, you know, so many uh, ways to, um, to network and to... Um, Feel the love, actually feel the love of, of, of freedom, of software freedom and, and, and hardware freedom. And I think that's probably what keeps bringing me back as well. And like I said, it's not just the people that are they're diehard into this. You know, people are kind of more enthusiasts for it and maybe using it for a device or two. Uh, check it out and see their, their alternatives. I think that's that's pretty cool. Is, you talk about the career the career track. Is there like a beginner track? Is, is it set up in track? So there's like a beginner intermediate advanced or is it kind of choose your own adventure or um so what we do is we get we get proposals uh we put out an open call for proposals so we get you know a whole bunch of things come in and so when we are selecting those i try to organize them into sort of tracks they're not planned out that way mm -hmm. necessarily but uh you know i've tried to organize them so so the, the career track is one that's actually planned out specifically to, to relate to a career skills and it's something that uh, we've we've been doing for the past three years something like that and it's been reasonably popular so we felt like it's it's something that is useful to, to people not just to get the technical information but maybe get a little uh, some soft skills as well cool awesome right. so actually uh, this this year our theme is entrepreneurship and um, and innovation and so the career track plays heavily in that but um, actually the whole conference is about 
um, is about your career because uh, networking with others that that are are in uh, um, IT and and uh, programming and things like that are is a great is a great way to um, move up in your in your career and also um, so for example if you want to move into a job about um, cloud computing or open there's a cloud track there's a virtualization cloud track so if that's something you want to do you you jump into that track or you know there's a, a scaling track so i mean there there's um ones that are more developer oriented and ones that are more uh uh sysadmin type of um oriented so so it can help you kind of taste the flavor of different careers within the world of computing and that's even without it being, you know, the year for entrepreneurship, careers, and innovation. You know, so um, so that's good. Vance, did you want to tell them a little bit more about what the keynotes are talking about? Sure. So so we have three keynotes that we're going to be we're going to be having. One of them is going to be Ethan Gallstad. He's the uh, founder of Nagios Enterprises. So Nagios is an open source. Uh, project which is involved with uh, basically monitoring. So if you have uh, 80 different servers running, you know, 120 different services on there, this is one way for you to keep tabs on all of them and get alerts when things aren't functioning right. Um, and it's been around for a while. So he's going to talk about uh, not so much his past experience, but why you should be the next uh, tech entrepreneur out there. Uh, so that'll be Ethan's, and then we're going to have, uh, uh, interestingly enough, uh, a father-daughter team. Uh, Joe Bourne, uh, he's a guy who's been involved with startups for about 20, 20 25 years, and uh, he was involved with a company called Neuros that made media centers that ran uh, Linux, and now he's actually doing another startup, which if you may remember... Uh, the name Iowa on stereo equipment. Uh, that was it's he's he's reviving that they've they've got the name and they're reviving it to produce these Bluetooth speakers that are uh, pretty they're pretty high powered. If you <laughs> if you go and listen to the demo online, you can you can uh, you can see they're pretty uh, they're pretty uh, interesting. So uh, and then his daughter actually was involved with uh, doing. Uh, designing a cup that was for, to be usable with, with people who have like Parkinson's or some other sort of motor control issues, and it's a, a tip-resistant cup. And uh, I see you have the the uh, screen up there right now. So yeah, so she started working on this when she was ten, and she think, she came wasn't started it because coming her grandfather, or yeah, somebody, yeah, yeah, there was someone in the family that really needed. And so she that. came up with the design, and then mm -hmm. she worked with her father to help crowdfund it. And at this point, they've you know they've made and sold tens of thousands of these cups. And uh, I think they have a ceramic version and a plastic version. Uh, and then our our third keynote is going to be Catherine Devlin. Uh, she is someone who, if you've been to a high Linux uh, Linux fest before. Uh, she should be very familiar. She's she's one of the outstanding speakers. She's been, oh, probably, uh, probably ten times. Uh, she's given presentations, and uh, very involved in the in the Python community. But now she works. Uh, you know, what do you what do you think when you think of innovation? You think of, you know, what what organization? Probably the U.S. government, right? <laughs> That's 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 innovative. Well, believe it or not, there are actually actually groups within the government that are involved with this stuff and uh, she is one of them with one of them called 18F uh, which is part of uh, the, the General Services Administration they do a lot of the supplies and stuff like that uh, for for the rest of the government and so they're bringing uh, free and open source software practices and modern you know sort of software practices and trying to bring that into the government to kind of you know, bring us at least into the 20th century, if not the 21st century. Uh, so, so that's that, that's an interesting take on on uh, doing that innovation and entrepreneurship. You know, within a government context. Awesome, awesome. So uh, that is, of course, uh, that's uh, in two weekends. 
Yep. So that'll well, be uh, a week from Friday and Saturday. That's right. Yeah. October, October 7th, 8th. 7th, 8th. <laughs> We're there in Clovis, Ohio. So a lot of our Pittsburgh people, not too far to go. If you want to go check it out and become right. part of this. Uh, and of course, everything's at OhioLinux.org. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So. It's only a three hour drive. And actually, if you're coming from Pittsburgh, if you have any trouble getting hotels really close to the, um, close to the although you could go back and forth in one day but why miss mm, the after party mm, so mm, that's rough. That's so rough. so if you have any trouble getting a, a place downtown actually along the way back to pittsburgh there's um reynolds reynoldsburg and uh mm -hmm. newark uh new is it newark and uh Ren reynoldsburg yeah. and which is about 30 minutes out it's sort of like driving to Mon monroeville only you're on your way home anyway <laughs> and there's a whole bunch uh, of uh, heath i've stayed in heath this past yeah, summer yeah. Out, out there for a music uh concert right. uh out in Thorn thornville so there's there's plenty of stuff there's like along 10, the way. 10 oh, yeah. hotels in that area oh, yeah. and um, um not, 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 and beyond that do, do you know how the uh airbnb game is in columbus ohio <laughs> <laughs> i have to admit i have not checked that so yeah if you get on there you might be you know you might be ahead of the game um I'm actually searching right now to see how it is. <laughs> actually, you know, I think there is a lot because I was looking for a Airbnb as a possibility mm -hmm. when I stayed out there for the concert, but we were too far out of town, really. And yeah, there looks like there's a good bit going on here, actually. So you can Airbnb that pretty quick. Uh, so uh, definitely worthwhile. I, I've, I've done a few Airbnbs and they're fantastic. So uh, yeah, actually pretty cheap. 35 a night, 50 a night. 38 a night. There's some, there's some good options yeah. out there. Probably better than a hotel, actually. Uh, so if you're not, if you want to go fully techie on this, you can uh, rock the Airbnb, sure. too. So, all yeah. right. Thank can, you so much. Can I say something yeah. else? Yes. That that Van says this online. There were 44 speeches. Like, how do you get 44 speeches in such a short period of time? There's six tracks that are running simultaneously mm -hmm. on Saturday. So, I mean, at a name your own price admission, this is the best show in town. How can you go wrong? It was six tracks going at once. There's going to be something that you like there. And even if there's somebody that you've brought along that's like maybe a little bit bored, maybe computer isn't quite, you know, what they, what they, you know, their cup of tea. There's, uh, there's the food court that's right attached there in, in the, in the uh, Hyatt. And also um, about a block and a half away, there's a place called the North Market. And I uh, think that the Strip District only in a building that's indoors so in case it rains oh, you know nice. there's there's <laughs> like nice. 35 distinct little strip districty kind of stores uh at, in the north market and that's uh northmarket.com and that is a great place to get lost into for an hour or two it's it's great to go there for lunch, but please come back because it's <laughs> because it's fun over there too. So um I wanted to mention that. I also wanted to mention you talked about the um podcast crawl and um, there's going to be, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, about eight podcasters represented in uh, the po the Linux podcast corner in our in our uh, expo hall. At uh, so some like one, I don't know which one, but some of them are going to be live. But otherwise, uh, but otherwise, I'm sure they'll be all bringing back great information and great um, stories to tell in their podcasts. That's awesome about uh, about their attendance at Ohio Linux Fest. So it is like the place to be. So are they are they Linux specific podcasts? There's a little bit of tech stuff or like general tech that that's coming in and well, being a part think, of this. Like, well, I think one of them might be the the Linux tech show, but there's also um, Hacker, Public Radio, Linux for the Rest of Us, the Mini PC Show, the Saturday Morning Linux, Sunday Morning Linux Review, Linux Lugcast, Kernel Panic Oddcast. By the way, I like this one. Single board computer <laughs> Sing and virtual private server yeah, show. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Very, so, very specific. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. So, I mean, so, I mean, it is really the place to be. The Expo Hall is really uh, going to be jumping. All the booths are taken. Might have to put somebody out in the hallway, but it's it's a uh, it's a uh, um, really good show to come to, and it is so cool. I'm so happy that it's in the Hyatt because one of the issues that we had in the past is that you could get lost in the expo and like forget to go to any of the talks, you know, or or you know, it's like the Ohio Linux Fest was like so spread out, you know, that it was was it upstairs, was it downstairs, which hallway was it in? But but now now it's really going to be able to jump in and get the maximum amount of time 
um, the best utilization of your time is going to be um, at, at the Hyatt, and it, it'll be better for 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 babies and strollers and people that can't walk far and older people that they can you know shoot up to their hotel room you know a lot easier i'd actually been in the facility at least the expo center facility earlier Mm -hmm. this year for the uh the arnold that was in town that you guys have every year out there uh yeah it's pretty pretty incredible i i it's the well, probably one of the biggest expo things that I've ever seen. It was yeah. just g- ginormous. And I've been to the one in New York. And it's just <laughs> insane up there. So, all right. Hey, okay, thank you. Awesome. Hey, well, if you'd stick around, we got some more news and awesome things sure. uh, here for the rest yeah. of the show. And uh, for that, I'm going to look to Chilla. Chilla, you got are, something. Just, just real quick, I have one last yeah. question. Yeah, are, yeah, the, are the podcasts, are all, the, are, are all those on the Linux, Ohio Linux org site? Or is that. Is there a way to find all those podcasts um, easily? No, we haven't. Uh, we haven't put anything up about them okay. yet. We actually, this is just today. We I can we, forward you an email we found out call. about this. Okay, cool. So yeah, this <laughs> is this is hot off the press. Okay, cool. Definitely, I'd definitely be interested yeah. in that. Yeah. Awesome. All right, Chilla, you got a. Uh, so it looks like something I might be recommending in my next intro to podcasting so, class. So, so you want? Well, let's let's hold the phone. On oh the, on no, the no. So, so um, and I think we talked about blue bre- very. Bre- we talked about blue very briefly. Um, I think somebody was using a blue microphone. On I it. was just using one oh, yesterday. The, the snowball, <laughs> like the snowball, yeah, okay. the snowball Yetis. That's usually what I recommend for podcast new podcasters. So blue blues come out with a couple microphones recently, and one most recently I saw announced today um, is their blue raspberry microphone. Um, not the color blue, but the company blue, and then the the, the mic is kind of has a red. Not to be it, confused with Raspberry Pi. Yes, not to be confused yeah. with because, Raspberry Pi. Since we were just talking um, about that, no relation, I'm sure. The the thing that I, the thing that caught my attention quickly was the device is both USB, so it works with pretty much any computer, I'm sure Linux as well, um, and iOS. So I thought that was kind of cool. Uh, the other thing that I really liked about the device is that it actually came with its own attached stand and kind of folds up compact. Mm-hmm. It's a little bit, it, it looks like it's a little bit thicker, but actually a little bit more narrow than the size of the average cell phone. Um, so I thought that was pretty cool. Um, and then along with just it being a microphone and hooking up to any iOS or, or USB device, um, it has it has a lot of extra features on the device. It has a headphone jack for monitoring, um, volume controls right on the side, gain control on the opposite side to adjust your input level. Um, the gain knob can actually be pushed in to, to mute it if you, if you need to. So I thought it was pretty nice. It has it has a, a decent diffuser on it. It's supposed to help reduce any background noise. I think this is one of those things if you're if you're on the go or you're you're kind of have your own mobile podcast unit, whether it be a laptop or whatever type of device, iPhone, iPad, etc. Android device to me this seems like it would be the device to get the one thing that was that, that definitely caught caught my eye is it does start at two hundred dollars oh jeez um but in the realm of what it does I paid hundred and fifty for a lightning integrated USB um, device so right two hundred dollars for what it does isn't bad I definitely wouldn't throw this to a, a starter um Unless they have I'm Bruce curious Wayne type money, I'm really but, curious to see how well it works because this is like, like the, you're looking at the, well, that's not lined up, right? You're looking at the use cases here, and it's um, uh, mm-hmm. you know, they're, they're they're showing it really like away from you, like nobody's talking into it uh, or anything like that, right? Um, mm-hmm. Like they're, 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 it's sitting on a desk, it's sitting in the middle of the room, and I'm curious kind of what the the. <sighs> It's not the ideal way to record. Is it more for room recording? I, I need to hear some results from this. Yeah, I'd like to hear some results. The one thing that interested me in the picture was they had a pretty pretty interesting setup where they had an iPhone on a, 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 a stand on a mount, mm-hmm. and then it was wired into the iPhone. So you right. could actually use it as a nice, a, a good external mic. It, 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 yeah, it, and while it, you're recording video, like and one was, was like cool. you have a teleprompter sitting there and a, and, a, and a dslr in the distance and it's more like kind of closer to them I, I, again i think it's going to be a better thing but i think you're still going to get a little bit of room bouncing you know uh, off of something like that uh, again it, being a 250 dollar mic maybe that means it, it, it is a little better about being directional and a little bit of that distance or something like that so i'm really curious to hear some results for this definitely so certainly 
Uh, but check it out. So two hundred and fifty dollars if you no, want to check 200 that out. Two hundred bucks. Um, I'm sure. It, well, I'm sure it might be a little cheaper on, on perhaps Amazon or something like that. But it's a, a interesting little uh, option for that. I, I don't know. I don't know if this is what you want for a podcast though. I think this feels like something you get for dictation. But then it's, it feels too pricey for something like that. But yeah, I'm going to I'm going to guess this is definitely targeted at the, at the podcast. It's not it's supposed to sit on your desk, doesn't really attach to there's no attachment for a mic stand it looks like maybe. Um other than what's built in there. I don't know, that might be standard. No, actually no, it looks like if you look at it, it looks like it kind of unscrews. Yeah, there's a little, it looks like it's got a little screw thing at the bottom there like like that would be a standard mm. kind of mic thing. So, yeah, it could be a possibility. I'd be interested to test it out. All right, my awesome thing. Uh, so, so I, I had a Plex server set up. I talked about it here on the show a few months ago, right? I ripped all my DVDs, all these things, all these guys, all got ripped, thrown on a drive, synced it up with Plex, streaming things happily to my uh, my phone and my Chromecast, and I never really got around to setting up my Apple TV. Really great. Get to really re-experience my DVD collection, right? Then the drive failed. Ooh. Then the drive failed. Did you, did you mirror it? Uh, did I what? Did you mirror the drive? Like uh, well, it had not entirely gotten up into the back blaze um, thing. And of course, I need about 200 bucks to get the drive to get what was backed up on there. Thankfully, Disk Warrior is pretty awesome. And it did let me recover my files off of it. Uh, so there, that was okay. Um, but uh, one way that I could have, uh, uh, that was just announced this past week, I could have avoided this entire problem. And chill, I'm going to show you just because I realized the shot wasn't set up. So, so look interesting in the corner there, please. Um, <laughs> Plex Cloud means saying goodbye to the always on PC. Because, I mean, this is always like you wanted that extra PC or, you, or, or a computer you maybe weren't using all the time. So it could sit there and process and, 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 and traffic cop things, right? Because so, one thing about Plex that I think is pretty cool, to your point, is sit there and process. Plex does transcoding, doesn't it? So yeah. if your device doesn't native isn't natively able to watch the way you encoded your video, it will actually re-encode it on the fly and stream the encoding, correct? Uh, I believe so. so I that, believe so. Yeah, I, I think that's pretty cool for, I know, some people that encode Blu-ray quality and the, that uses a, a, a higher-end BinQ format, I think it is, um, which obviously you're most of your Android devices aren't going to work with out of the box. You can use things like VLC, a uh, good open source initiative. Um, your Apple devices are going to have some problems. So I add Plex is phenomenal mm -hmm. and it runs on Linux. And, and, and there's, there's other options that have come up about like a DVR. If you, 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 you hook up an OTA, an over the air uh, antenna to it, mm -hmm. which I was looking at as a maybe option for this. Now you have to pay for it, and, and it's 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 connected with Google Drive. It is uh, fifty nine ninety nine. Uh, so you're going to have this. Uh, you're going to have to have a your Plex Pass, which is five bucks a month or forty dollars a year, or a ma uh, plus in addition to that your Amazon Drive uh, subscription, which is sixty dollars a year for unlimited storage, mind you. So I mean, it it is. I mean, it, you're looking at a hundred bucks a year. If if you get the full year uh, things, but that but still, now when you're traveling and just want to watch that movie, you don't have to worry about okay, is the connection from this going to go all the way to my home? Is my home did the laptop or did the did the Mac Mini reset because there was a storm and uh, and all your stuff is now accessible on there on the um, on the Amazon Amazon Cloud. So uh, I I think that's pretty cool. Plex is really doing a lot of stuff to upgrade lately, and and really kind of becoming that great um um you know media center everywhere for for a lot of people i think uh so that's pretty cool i haven't i've yet to pay for plex because is i have not had much need to but this could be a pretty interesting thing and as i look at all my online options i am sitting on both an amazon uh i'm sorry a, a google drive and a dropbox that I, I paid 10 bucks each for for space for sharing files so maybe moving stuff to amazon and doing that but i don't know how great they are about all that stuff yet but uh we'll see we'll see it might be worth investigating if that means that i get to kind of roll this into there as well in the long run so definitely some and, very interesting options and to me their support is just phenomenal it's they definitely went out after every market possible that their client have you looked at their client support list no. So, so they support TiVo, Windows, Sonos. They have a browser-based version. 
home theater PCs, smart TVs. So I actually have a I have a, a, a Plex app on my on my Samsung TV. PlayStation 3, Xbox 360, Chromecast, Amazon Fire TV, PlayStation 4, Xbox One, Android TV, NVIDIA Shield, Apple TV, Roku, Windows Phone, Krauss. You can pull out that old phone and start using it. Um, <laughs> you got a Plex app. Android and iOS. So there, I, I can't think of any devices, really, that that this doesn't run on, which I think is is, is, is a telltale sign of the, the effort they put into this. Mm-hmm. It's awesome. Good to go. Plex Pass. Um, all right. So let's, uh, hey, let's give a shout out to our friends that are feeding our so many in studio guests today. <laughs> Slice on Broadway, right up here in Beachview. Of course, they have other locations and PNC Park, home of the Pittsburgh Pirates. And um, uh, Chilla, we're just going to, Chilla, Chilla, pull out that pizza. Pull out the pizza because you're in the shot. So we might as well uh, show off. I don't know. Is there any left I'm afraid over there? To move. You're free to move. Don't worry about it. Uh, <laughs> uh, of course, and uh, down in Main Street in Carnegie, PA, our good friend supporting Pittsburgh. For podcasting with the perfect pepperoni pizza for so long, helping our guests that uh, uh, join us here on uh, uh, dinner time, especially here for the awesome cast. Uh, so support them, TGH underscore slice on the Twitter, slice on Broadway on the Facebook and uh, the Instagram, and let them know the awesome cast sent you. Support some Pittsburgh pizza while you're at it. So thanks to them. All right, we had a couple submissions that I wanted to share. Yeah, I'll pull them up here in a moment. One from Doug, I know, um, that I still was... No, no, oh, yeah, yeah. Um, Doug sent us Field Trip to Mars, the first group VR experience. Haven't dove entirely into this, um, but I don't know if you had you can look at it in the, in the uh, chat as well, Chilla. Um, so I think I saw a story uh, uh, breeze by me I'm waiting for the thing to load. Um, but yeah, a big uh, VR experience that... Yeah, I'm going to go to you, Chilla. <laughs> You're going to go to me? <laughs> I'm going to go to you, Chilla. That's what yes. I got. But no, it's it, this is this is the uh, first-hand experience of what it would look like to be on Mars, kind of 3D, you know, in 3D, you know, in VR, uh, that they're they're letting uh, students get into. So uh, it's pretty cool. There's a little bit of behind-the-scenes there as well. Uh, so, uh, no, that's pretty fun. Uh, you can go to fieldtriptomars.com to get the uh, video about what exactly they're doing on there. Um, so, th- so this is, like, Whoa, that's awesome. Are you, seeing what, are you seeing what they're doing there? Where they're, it's, it's like overlaid onto the side, the bus windows. Yeah. That is yeah. awesome. So, so the, the, it's built into the bus. They're using, you're using these, uh, the, are they, are they clear glass? It looks like. Well, I can't imagine they're totally clear, but I think they like, give you the as the the feeling that it's they're, clear. They're and those you're looking they, out. They look like they're they're the see through. Um, they look like they're the see through um, um, LCDs. Yes, like the Samsung ones. I know some people were working with uh, that we've talked about before, like for the pop machines and everything. But yeah, that's pretty cool. That is phenomenal. And, and the, I want one of those buses. And the bus is like seriously driving around. So like in real space. Oh yeah, this this is that glass technology I've seen before. Yeah, because the, the, what what happens is when you turn on uh, when you electrify these panels, the, these glass the, the windows in here, um, they become opaque, and then they're able to, uh, of course, do the, the do the video on top of it as well. So how much do they cost? What the panels? Yeah, I have friends that will be able to tell you. Okay. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, that's pretty cool, and, and and it's it's seriously like moving in real space as the bus like travels down the road, and uh, and 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 it reacts to it in in three D. So definitely go check it out. Fieldtriptomars.com. Thanks to Doug Durda, Should I drink that? dot com for uh, for uh, uh, sending that along to us. All right, and we had another one come along here from Juggalo John. Uh, I didn't get to get into this. I, I went to download it and, and haven't been able to boot it up yet. Um, it's called, it, it, the site is becandid.com. There's another app. And uh, let me get over to what he describes it as. Uh, he says he saw it on Reddit in a few videos. It's uh, a chat a chat board that is anonymous, kind of like Yik Yak, but not sure. And so I was hoping I was hoping Katie could have gone a little bit into this and, and let us know what she thought of this. But um, yeah, it's uh, it's an anonymous chat board. Um, I, it, 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 it's uh, so their their line is uh, speak your mind freely with the people and communities that matter to you. And again, it looks like just kind of dropping into some um, um, interesting topics and doing that. You do sign up with Facebook, so I don't know how anonymous that's going to be. 
<laughs> so, um, but yeah, uh, it, it looks like, a, you know, again, kind of a, a, a disjointed way for you to, um, you know, let us know what you really think. Because, you know, that's what we need more of here in this election season. Um, mm-hmm. Somebody said that they, they thank you, thank you, uh, election, for uh, uh, letting me uh, delete 30% of my Facebook friends uh, <laughs> from one of them. So, mm-hmm. um, we had some really interesting um stuff uh lined up this week i i saw something i thought it was a note from chilla but i realized it was a note to myself um <laughs> of course the, the 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 um um debate was was last night i was trying to look for a different word because i had been making fun of it using words i used to describe monday night raw uh but uh i did i did jump into a little bit of it um because i i did have the app on my on my samsung gear uh vr chilla Mm-hmm. I don't know if you've di- dived into Alt Space VR just yet. I have not yet. So, um, I, so they had a virtual reality um, party, I guess, debate mm-hmm. watch party hosted by a virtual Al Roker. <laughs> I did not get to see Al Roker, but it was pretty cool. Um, it, it was it, it, it was interesting because you drop into it and you say, "Hey, I want to watch the debate," and it drops you into this space that, and I've been to like you know 30 rock you know rockefeller plaza and all that stuff they drop you basically into rockefeller rockefeller plaza at night and you look across and there's a giant screen and the debate's playing so i virtually walk myself over there um this is my my motion for walking myself virtually over there uh and uh more like click over there or whatever the case may be but uh it it, uh it was interesting so i went over there was a few people watching it and then I got turned around because one of those things where I'm sitting and I couldn't really turn around to move anywhere else. And I got stuck in a corner <laughs> as I as I end up doing in this program. Um, it was interesting. It was really interesting. Um, I, again, just kind of checked it out, you know, for a couple of minutes. But uh, I also felt like, um, why was it so low? Like, it, it was there. It was in front of me. It got louder as I got closer. But it wasn't really loud enough to really listen into. Um, and then there were, like, some people there that were, like, talking to each other. Because I think you can turn on the microphone and, and like straight talk to people in real space mm. too. So um, I don't know how much of that really worked out or anything like that. But um, but it was uh, it was kind of interesting, interesting use of the space and seeing that we're at that point where they are. I mean, the debates you know a year ago was the first time where they did like 360 video. I think like the Republican debates or something like that. And uh, this to actually say, hey, virtual Al Roker is going to show it up and be the host of your virtual debate watching party. Um, so NBC is not shy to, uh, from starting, you know, trying stuff like this. So uh, I think it's uh, pretty interesting. So uh, how useful it is, I don't know. I'm still trying to figure out Alt Space VR. I'm like kind of afraid to go into it. You know, because it's pretty much Second Life in oh. virtual reality. <laughs> you know, and, and 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 I know how weird that gets. And there's like the the stuff we were talking about in here about the uh, the virtual bubble that so that pe- because people would apparently like because you move by pointing at a spot and clicking, and you basically warp to that spot. You don't actually walk anywhere. Um, so you could do that and just jump in front of somebody's face. <laughs> like I saw somebody else that was like one avatar was inside the other one and, and just completely violating its virtual <laughs> space. And so this is, this is a social problem, right? And they're trying to solve that as well. So, all right, Chilla, uh, one more you want to touch on before we get out of here. Um, do you want to do, who, do you care who buys Twitter? Or do you want to I do, do? I do care who buys Twitter because I, I kind of like Twitter, and I don't want Twitter to go to be to, to, to fall apart <laughs> more than and, it already. Because is. so, so one of the things that was was in the news today that that um, Disney is talking to its accountants and whatnot, and I'm sure their legal teams about should they buy Twitter. Um, I'm not sure that I want Disney owning Twitter. Well, okay, here's here's how here's how I look at this. So we have Verizon trying to belt buy Yahoo already owns AOL. We have uh, they buy everything that's old after it's that's, like that's just it's peaked too. and gone. It's it's like they're, they're getting Docker Media. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. Uh, uh, Comcast owns NBC Universal. Comcast whatever um, owns like a, a ton of streams as it is. Uh, Disney, I try not to think of Disney as Disney anymore. Disney is ABC, Disney, 
ESPN, et cetera, et cetera, Marvel. right? Like Disney isn't the Mickey Mouse company. Disney is a Comcast Universal at this point, right? Mm-hmm. Like, like I keep forgetting, man, you know, ABC's getting all these Marvel shows, and it's like, well, they're the same company now, you know? Um, so don't think Mickey Mouse is buying Twitter. I, I don't think of it as Mickey Mouse buying Twitter. What I worry about <laughs> is, is it going to taint my some of the advertising i don't even mind reading because they do a pretty good job of curating it i would say they're above and beyond even what i see from facebook as far as ad curation um i worry would my timeline turn into advertisements for tv shows advertisements for movies very is it already yeah but it's 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 across everywhere is it going to be more tainted to the disney realm i i don't know i that i've heard google's looking at them i would much rather see google make a run at twitter and help somebody who's also a online media company right Mm -hmm. not a a rooted in old media yeah it's this just I, i don't know i it'll it would be interesting to see what happens because there's there's also a dirty underground of Twitter that that, that what are, are they going to start to clamp down and really start to moderate? And I don't know. It, it, it's just I find it troublesome. Indeed. Um, I, I am uh, finally relegated to the idea that Twitter, as I have known and enjoyed it for nearly 10 years, may not be Twitter much longer. Yeah, it's, I, I wonder if it's going to be one of those things that this buyout is going to push people to a different platform and, and i don't know what that platform is going to be i think there's room for it because we have haven't you know most of the social media that people are using these days aren't they really kind of the old hats now like your facebook your twitter even reddit um and then nothing's really taken hold like a google plus that's tried mm-hmm. uh i think it is well, i don't know what that is and it feels like things aren't like things don't start up and get this crazy, um, this crazy uh, uh, flood of people like it used to with Twitter, Facebook, um, Snapchat, you know, things like that. Uh, yik yak, you know, things that kind of come and go. Periscope, Meerkat, maybe the closest things I could think of. So, what is that Twitter, Facebook thing to to replace it? And what does that look like? I'm kind of curious. Um, or is it just does Twitter and Facebook just misstep so hard we clamor for something else in sometime in the near future? Like I don't know, Disney buying it and deciding that it's going to stream <laughs> football to us without us asking. Um, so yeah, you never know. All right, real quick, other stories that we had in the lineup that did not get to uh, as we have been doing. Just so you have an idea of what we had an idea, what was interesting to us for the week. Um, oh, we did not. T- okay, we have to talk about this real, real quick. Um, Snapchat changed its name, and they have Spectacles. This is for real. I seriously had to check my calendar and make sure it wasn't April Fool's Day when I read this article. Has anybody else seen this? I, ha- I have seen this, and I, I, I'm i not going to lie. I didn't get to watch. Look at those. I, You're going to wear those. Look at those. Those, I, are, those, are, kind of, those are kind of specs you'll wear, Chilla. They're they're definitely interesting looking. I did see a black pair that was not as rough on the eyes. Oh, there you go. As, as there a you lot go. of the color. Yeah, to me, that wasn't that bad. Um, I, think they're, I think at least Google Glass thought about people that actually wore glasses and had... You know, prescription oh, yeah. lenses. Snapchat, and... does, Snapchat doesn't care. You're not cool enough to wear these. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, you better go out and buy contacts if you wear glasses yeah. and want to use yeah. these. I, I find it to be interesting, but I find it to be... Obviously, the price is a lot lower. Mm-hmm. About 150 bucks, is it? 130 uh, Yeah, 130 bucks. Yeah. The thing that I don't like is they only work with Snapchat, and you get a 10-second recording of video. Because of Snapchat. Because it's Snapchat. Right. I feel like I should be able to grab X amount of time and then take it on my device and, and clip it down or, or do something along those lines. Um, and, of course, then you're going to need an iOS or Android device with Bluetooth right. connection um, or, or Wi-Fi to to allow that transfer susan vance do you see yourselves wearing some of these you know yeah they may this will finally if, if you're not no. already get you on the snapchat bandwagon 
No. <laughs> yeah, that's not quite my uh, fashion sense, I don't think. <laughs> that's who should buy Twitter. Snapchat. Snapchat. <laughs> you know, actually, if anybody, <laughs> maybe. Uh-huh. Maybe. I don't know if they have enough money for it, but I have a feeling that price tag has been going down and down. So I think it's interesting. Um, it, it is kind of like the mini Google Glass idea. It does one thing. Uh, I don't know. I'm kind of curious to see how people react to this. So, by the way, Snapchat changed its name to Snap Inc. in, in the process of doing this. So, uh, okay. It's one way to monetize, I guess. All right, other quick stories that we did uh, uh, have in the rundown but did not get to today. YouTube Go is a new app for offline viewing and sharing. That's cool. Or the new the YouTube keeps coming out with new things. Although it was weird because it told me that I didn't have YouTube Red because I had I had I had I had my tra- my thing had ended. But it's like it's part of Google Music. What are you doing? Uh, so I had a little weirdness today. YouTube Heroes will help keep websites comments clean. Um, this is controversial. I'm not going to get into it right now. Basically, it's kind of. <laughs> taking advantage of people that are moderators on youtube i think uh from the discussions i've been hearing square is trying to fix chip card speed problems this is amazing if you get a chance go read it and i hope it forces competition in the market and all of these uh the, the show notes will be linked uh at at, at our show posting or at awesomecast.net so you can check out the links to these uh linkedin learning arrives to build build out your skills section they did buy um um linda uh training uh, linda.com a while ago so that's probably a roll-in for that hydrogen fuel cell train offers pollution-free rail trips i'm a big fan of taking the train um is the remediated note 7 still a fireball risk this is the ones this is the ones you were talking about where they were they're keeping them from charging all the way no so actually someone got a new refer a new clean okay device and it caught fire the day <laughs> they bought it a, a fireball risk though <laughs> like well, are they are they ex- it's, a, it's, a, it's a flame it's a ball of flame in your hand so do they get more explodey this time no i don't think they're more explodey but they're, they're definitely there's a question of is it really fixed and are they still do they continue to be and who will choose facebook over slack and will microsoft answer back clarify so facebook is releasing its version of slack in the coming weeks Um, it will be open to all companies of any size it will be free to try i thought that was kind of an interesting thing Mm -hmm. um and it will have its own um chat for your company and it will have all of the features or a lot of the features of Facebook. The interesting thing that I find out about I find about this this concept of Facebook trying to 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 compete in the Slack space, people were very familiar with how Facebook and Facebook Messenger work, which could make it a very easy transition. And especially when you get into the larger companies, um, people want that familiar experience i could see companies trying to adopt this i know microsoft has has been talking about their skype for business persistent chat competing in in the slack space and they have yammer that kind of competes in that social media twitter facebook space for enterprise Mm -hmm. um Microsoft doesn't, to me, have a cohesive story right now. Things are still, they integrate together, but they're separate components. I, I really think Facebook could could push Slack a little bit. And what I think is going to be interesting out of all of this is I think we're going to see a massive amount of competition. And I think the products are only going to get better. All righty. Um, from the chat room, uh, Juggalo John, uh, uh, to our, our Twitter discussion, says, I follow a lot of porn stars, so if they stop them from posting nudes, I'll be upset. So putting that <laughs> out there from uh, Mickey's going to take away your nudes, says Krause. Uh, and yes, John, we did talk about Be Candid, but again, I haven't been able to dive into it a lot. I was hoping we can get uh, Katie into it because you know how she used to like Yik Yak. And that's how I pitched it to her to go try it out. So I'll have a report for her in the coming weeks as well. I did download it today, though. Um, events yeah, coming up this week. Um, Lipson is doing a Lipson Live one-day online conference. Hashtag Lipson Live. Uh, so you can find that over on Lipson.com. It's part of International Podcast Day. Hey, guys, did you know September 30th is International Podcast Day? So uh, please um, start your podcast, learn, teach somebody else about podcasts, share some podcasts, do something special for that. I believe it is internationalpodcastday.org, or you can Google it. It'll come right up. Uh, we've done some stuff uh, around Podcast Day in the past. I think I talked to um, Buzzy from Epicast last year, and we just kind of had a, a podcasting throwdown there. Um, also, this week, like I mentioned, the pod crawl at River edgepgh.com uh, for more information on that myself uh, will be there with Chilla and Doug for an awesome cast live 
and 9.45 on that. Check out all the, all the shows. Sorgatron Media Coffee is at Work Hard Pittsburgh this Saturday at 1 p.m. Come down, chat with us, tell us about the project you're working on or, or find out about the projects we're working on. Uh, hang out with us, ask questions. It's a, it's a good time. I recommend uh, going down there. It's free. We're bringing some uh, coffee from our friends, Black Forge. Uh, free coffee, free 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 chats, and uh, and uh, 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 chilling. I may be playing on the green screen afterwards, so you might be if you want to. You can hang out and watch us uh, work on that as well. So I think that's everything. OhioLinuxFest.org. Of course, thank you so much, Susan and Vance, for joining us once again. Our yearly. Uh, uh, connection. <laughs> it's always great to be here. <laughs> Thank you so much. John Chichilla at chillatech.net at Chilla on the Twitter. John Chichilla on the Facebook. Ooh. Plug in the Facebook. Plug in the Facebook. That's where you put the good come photos, right? Me. Come friend me. Come come be his friend. He's looking for friends. And of course, at Sorgatron on Twitter. Check out everything going on at SorgatronMedia.com. Everything from Underground hobos to mindfulness uh, client podcasts and pro wrestling stuff over at SorgatronMedia.com. I hope to see you at some of the events coming up this weekend. Big weekend. And, of course, uh, please go out and join our friends over at Ohio Linux Fest um, coming up here in Columbus next weekend. Thank you so much, everybody. Thank you to our awesome our awesome co-host today. You have been our awesome audience. Have an awesome week. This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com.